Hey everyone, Joe Axman here. And in this video, I want to do a quick overview of the upcoming eclipse, full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio. All right, so I'm going to share my screen and get started. Okay. All right, for this example, I'm using uh, my chart as, as the um, comparison. <clears throat> Because this is the, the best way to look at it, I think. Uh, this is how I look at it. I mean, you can look at the eclipse on its own, but mainly, you want if you want to see how it affects you, you need to um, do a dual chart um, with with your with your chart. So we can see here that May fifth, um, Friday, May fifth, which is, I guess, this coming Friday, there's going to be a full moon, lunar eclipse, and it's. Um, Let's see, about 10 degrees from the nodes. So it's not like super um, tight, but it is still an eclipse. And um, it will still have its impact. Um, and I just saw some things online and everyone was like, oh, it's good. You know, this is going to be super positive. And I was like, wait a minute. Um, are we not taking dignities into account here? Moon is debilitated in Scorpio. And, you know, in the past, I might have thought, oh, full moon lunar eclipse. Full moon lunar eclipses represent a ripening of karma, like ripe fruit, right? New moon is beginning. Uh, full moon is fullness, apex, right? That makes sense, right? Right. We have this, this lunar curve, the beginning, the, the height, and the end. And the beginning and the end are kind of similar. The, they're, they're the, the, the new moon or the balsamic moon, you know, moon has just started or moon is, just, is right is at the end. The full moon is the apex. It's the height of the, the lunar phase, right? It's where the moon is at its fullest, brightest, strongest, uh, most intense. So it's a ripening of karma. It's a ripe fruit, okay? Uh, so just a little story, little anecdotal story, which um, uh, will illustrate this. Um, on my father's solo return this year, I got really excited because on his birthday this past year, it was he had a an eclipse. He's born on his solar return was uh was exactly lined up with an eclipse, and the eclipse was right on his sun, and it was full moon, and so his sun's in Taurus, uh exactly conjunct my Mercury. That's all I know. So it's twenty five degrees Taurus. Moon was at twenty five degrees Scorpio, and uh so i thought wow this is going to be a really important year for you uh something major is going to happen and you're going to reap your karma hey, you might have like some you know exciting business relationship or something i wasn't quite clear about what it was going to be but i thought it's going to be a big year something important is going to happen um well as you know he died this year but um moon uh, is a uh, particular importance to him because he's a cancer ascendant, right? So moon is his um, uh, ascendant lord. So even in transit, you still want to pay attention to what planets are ruling what houses, okay? So just keep that in mind that karma, ripening of karma can be positive or negative. But with moon in Scorpio, it's less likely to be positive. I'm just being honest with you. Uh, um, oh, let's see. Oh, moon. Oh, moon. In, yeah. Okay. So here we, we have something really interesting, though which I didn't real, which I wasn't paying attention to. So that's why it's really good. I, I just did this on the fly kind of thing. Um, full moon, solar, uh, lunar eclipse, moons in Scorpio, but Mars is in Cancer. So there's a mutual reception between Mars and moon. And uh, that's significant. That is going to add dignity to the moon, even though they're both in bad. Well, I mean, it should be interesting. And I'd like to see how it plays out for different people because Mars is... is um, debilitated in, in Cancer, and Moon is debilitated in Scorpio. And they're not exactly, but it's it's close enough. It's within proximity by degrees that, you know, there's some trinal um, relationship there. So, you know, that might negate 
some of the negative effects of Moon in Scorpio. And, um, you know, um, we just have to wait and see. Moon Moon gets a rating of, of two points because of that. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's debilitated. But in any case. Um, so you want to see what what house is moon rules. For me, it's the ninth house. So ninth and the first. So uh, I could say something like uh, religion, philosophy, uh, connection to God, higher studies, travel. Something about that is going to come to me in a in a potentially negative light. There might be a reversal because can because Mars is in Cancer and uh, there's a mutual reception there somewhat, and it is trinal. Um, so there could be something positive that may come out of it, but it, overall it could be like, I don't know, it could be a depressive episode because ninth house deals with optimism, faith, connection to God. Uh, moon in Scorpio is very intense and deep. Uh, it is a ripening of karma. So there could be something that comes to me as a person. It's in my first house. It's almost conjunct my, um, my north node by a few and the sun is conjunct my jupiter so it is going to ha have an effect uh, somehow some way um but that's what you want to see what house is moon ruling and then uh where is it uh in your chart right so uh, obviously this can go many different ways uh depending on what significant um house uh moon rules if it's your ascendant lord that's, that's gonna be particularly important if it's your mc public image career if it's your descendant then it's partnerships marriage uh business partnership relationship with others fourth house home uh parents um you know brick and mortar material type stuff um and so so forth the second house would be finances or it could be um, self-worth, uh, image, that type of thing, voice-related, food-related. Third house, obviously, you know, siblings, intellect, writing, communication. Um, already talked about fourth house. Fifth house, children, uh, investments, funny games, romance, arts, creativity. Sixth house, work, daily grind, uh, enemies um health right seventh house already talked about eighth house could be death uh crisis this could be particularly difficult if it's in the eighth house inheritance related shared resources ninth house already talked about it but philosophy religion connection to god optimism long distance travel uh tenth house career public image eleventh house um groups networks friends I mean, you all know this stuff already. Um, and 12th house, subconscious, foreign lands, loss, um, confusion, creativity, mental health. In any case, guys, um, yeah, look at the house, the moon rules, and then where it's placed. So those you're combining those two things. Um, and there could be, and in general, there could be something negative that has a spin on it that may have some positive silver lining, you could say, right? So that's that's it, basically, um, in essence for, and you wanna see what can, what, um, uh, where, if it's conjuncting anything, if it's, so it's conjunct my North node. So mm, that is pretty um, karmic. So we'll see what happens. Um, I don't expect to die, um, so, but, um, you know, perhaps I'll have some kind of crisis. I don't know. We'll see. I don't know. That has a silver lining. Uh, that's it for now. All right. Thanks. All right. Bye.